God lift it. I don't think it is very useful to speculate on what God might or might not be able to do. Rather, we should examine what he actually does with the universe we live in. All our observations suggest that it operates according to well-defined laws. These laws may have been ordained by God, but it seems that he does not intervene in the universe to break the laws, at least not once he had set the universe going. However, until recently, it was thought that the laws would necessarily break down at the beginning of the universe. That would have meant that God would have had complete freedom to choose how the universe began. In the last few years, however, we have realized that the laws of science may hold even at the beginning of time. In that case, God would have had no freedom. The way the universe began would be determined by the laws of science. Well, thank you very much. And Carl Sagan, in, in your introduction to the book, you commented on this. You said this is also a book about God, or perhaps about the absence of God, because Hawking left nothing for a creator to do. Now, God, of course, means many things to many people. What sort of God, basically, are we talking about when, when we talk about reading the mind of God? Well, I think that's, uh, that's an excellent question, and, uh, and I'd be most interested to, uh, to hear uh, Stephen Hawking's answer. But just, just to try to illuminate the range of possibilities, consider uh, uh, two alternatives. Uh, one is the... Uh, the uh, notion popular in the West uh, of God as a sort of outsized uh, elderly white male with a long white beard sitting in a throne in the sky and tallying the fall of every sparrow. Uh, contrast that with uh, the idea of God in the mind of, uh, let's say, Spinoza or Einstein, which was, at least very closely, the sum total of the laws of the universe. Uh, now, it would, would be madness to deny that there are uh, well-defined physical laws in the universe. And if that's what you mean by God, then there's no question that, uh, that God exists, but it's a very uh, remote uh, God, a, uh, what the French call a roi faniant, uh, a do-nothing king. On the other hand, uh, the former model, the, the one who intervenes daily, uh, for that there seems to be, as Dr. Hawking said, uh, no evidence. I think it is wise, my, my own personal feeling, uh, to be uh, a little humble on, uh, on such matters. Uh, we must recognize that we are dealing with, uh, by definition, the most difficult things uh, to know the furthest from human experience. And uh, perhaps we will be able to penetrate a little way uh, into these mysteries. I think, uh, Professor Hawking, you'd like to come in here. I use God in the same sense that Einstein did. It is a really the reason why the universe is as it is, and why the universe exists at all. Can I ask Arthur Clarke what he meant when you're alleged to have said to the papal nuncio, I don't believe in God, but I'm extremely interested in him? Well, I guess I haven't placed my bets yet. And, um, you know, Stephen's remarks and Charles' remarks reminded me that this was said uh, 200 years ago um, when N Napoleon, I think, was talking to Laplace, who published his theory of the universe, and uh, Napoleon said, uh, God isn't in it. And Laplace replied, Sir, I have no need for that hypothesis. Do you think that the church is, in fact, beginning to recognize that it, it may have to lose its priority, its eminence as the sole arbiter of, of these matters, and that science will be allowed to come in as an equal partner? Well, the church is certainly, when I say, when you say the church, the Roman Catholic Church has become very much more liberal. I had the a pleasure of giving a talk in the Vatican myself in the Pontifical Academy of Science quite recently and met the Pope. And, of course, they're reinstating Galileo, and so things are moving. 
In fact, are they moving backwards as well as forward, Carl Sagan? Because I understand that in the earliest days of civilization, then the priests were in fact what we call the scientists, the ones who could study astronomy and who could predict eclipses and things. Do you see the scientist coming back into an almost sacerdotal position like this, or am I overstating it? Well, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I hope you're overstating it. Uh, I think the essence of uh, the scientific method is the willingness to uh, to admit you're wrong, the willingness to abandon uh, ideas that don't work, uh, and the essence of uh, religion is not to change uh, anything. The supposed truths are handed down by uh, some revered figure, and then no one is supposed to make any uh, any progress beyond that because all the truth is thought to be in hand. I'm really talking about setting Please. an agenda for the future. Uh, my sense is that the scientific way of, of thinking, questioning, uh, some delicate mix of uh, creative encouragement of new ideas and the most rigorous and skeptical scrutiny of new and old ideas, uh, I think that is the path to the future, not just for science, but uh, for all human institutions. We have to be willing to challenge because we are in desperate need of change. Can I put the same question to you, Arthur Clarke, then? Politicians or priests are setting the agenda or scientists? I'm very fond of quoting Pandy Nero on this when he once said that politics and religion are obsolete. The time has come for science and spirituality. I hear from the clicking that uh, Professor Hawking would like to come in. I don't think that physics tell us how to behave to our neighbors. Ah. Well, uh, physics may determine who our neighbors are and what, on what planets they live. Well, you say that science should be skeptical of politics. Don't you think we ought to be a little skeptical about science too? I mean, can we trust you guys? I, uh, I think you should certainly be skeptical, but uh, my view is that there's no community of people on the planet more skeptical than science. It's our stock in trade. It's the lifeblood of our subject. Science is a self-correcting subject, not you... like politics. <laughs> <laughs> well, politics are corrected by other forces. Uh, can I ask one question of, of you all, and that is the the question of creativity which fascinates me here we have three enormously creative people with enormously creative intellects how in fact does it does it operate do you Arthur Clarke do you sort of find um, a problem that you'd like to work on and then look for a solution to it <clears throat> I'm not sure what my mechanism of creation is and I don't think I really want to know because I'm afraid that if I discovered it I would like the centipede when it was asked how it walked just fell distracted in a ditch <laughs> or a golfer when he's asked about his swing yes so you don't think about that um, Carl Sagan th there is a serious side to this well this issue of where creativity comes from is uh, I, I share your fascination with it um, I don't think we understand very much about it I my practice is uh, merely to uh, to respect my unconscious mind, who uh, often is much wiser than than the conscious part of me, and uh, and pay attention to what it says. Uh, uh, in fact, I think this is connected with that that delicate tension uh, at the heart of the scientific method I talked about before. The unconscious mind proposes a, a range of possibility. Uh, of possibilities and the conscious mind disposes, that is, compares those ideas with uh, the real world, checks for internal inconsistencies, uh, and so on. I think the creative process is a partnership uh, between a uh, conscious and an unconscious part of our, of our minds. At least, uh, that's how it seems to me. I'd like to leave the last word on creativity, in fact, with uh, Professor Stephen Hawking. Just whenever you're ready, sir. I am just curious. I want to find out how things work. I follow my nose. One thing leads to another, and I don't know what I will find next. 
Now I think I would like to retreat a little bit into poetry myself because it's nearly 150 years ago since Matthew Arnold wrote his splendid poem, The Future. But what was before us we know not and we know not what